Hey everybody, today we're going to be breaking down a heroic sci-fi queue using Albion 5 Tundra. Let's have a listen. So let's go ahead and set the scene. I thought for this particular queue, it would be fun to do a sci-fi queue, something similar to what you might hear in Star Trek or something along those lines. So breaking down the major hit points of this queue, it opens with distress. Our hero is in trouble. Maybe a ship's engine is out and he's trying to fix it for the crew while the bad guys are closing in. Then we have this moment of the lowest point, an explosion or something happens and the hero's team is waiting to see if the hero is okay. Then we get this glimmer of hope. Maybe they hear radio chatter or something. Then the hero reemerges and has saved the day. He fixed the ship. Then lastly, the team takes off before the bad guys can close in and the day is saved. Coming up with this chord progression, I just looked for intervals between chords that I thought sounded spacey and heroic. So I came up with this progression. When writing this melody, I wanted to open on a G-sharp 11 to let the listener know this was in Lydian. I think Lydian is a great mode to be in for spacey stuff. In the first cell, the melody drops down to a major 7th right after resolving to the D, and then walks back up to end on C-sharp. From there, in the second cell, it becomes the flat 6 of F minor, and then it just goes down a 4th to the minor 3rd of F minor. When in F minor, I wanted to think of it in the F harmonic minor scale, because E natural is the sharp 4 of B flat major. I don't think I utilized this in this particular cue, but that was my mindset when I was coming up with this progression. I did this because I wanted some sort of consistency between chords and progressions. Similar to how the first chord G opens on a Lydian, I wanted all the other major chords in this particular cue to be Lydian as well. Which takes us to the third cell, B flat major. The melody lands on B flat, then it just goes up a B flat major chord with a passing tone of G to land on A flat major. I use the same rhythm and repetition of ascending from the first cell to add some more consistency to the melody. So this takes us to the last cell of part A of the theme. At this moment, it is at the halfway point of the theme, so I wanted to emphasize that by taking the melody to the highest pitch it has gone as of yet. Also at this moment, the hero returns, so I really wanted to emphasize that in the cue. From there, it goes down a fourth to add some repetition, like we did with the F minor. Then it goes down to C and up to a half step to take us back to the opening. I think the half step intervals in this particular type of cue really add to the spaciness of the sound. Now we are at the first cell of part B, and that first cell is the exact same as the beginning. Except for this time, the second cell, we are into B flat major and it mirrors part A when we are in the F minor. The third cell of part B goes to the F minor and walks up an F minor chord, mirroring the third cell of part A. Then we land on G, 
which takes us to the last cell of the theme, where we go up to the highest point from G to C on the C major chord. So going back to the first part of the cue, we open on a C minor 7 flat 5, then the 7th goes up to a B natural, then it resolves to a G major chord. I really like the way this C sharp minor 7 resolves to that G, yet again doing those half steps. Now I'll go over the instrumentation and the patches I used from this library. Starting with the opening hit point, I used two preset pads to add a foundation to the arrangement. I am using the dark pad from the library, and that is just playing a very low C. Then with that, I have the awesome glacial pad two, and that is just giving us that C minor seven flat five foundation. Layering the pads, I have the high multiphonic woodwinds adding some spooky, spacey type textures. I'm using the brass high hollow distant patch to add some swells in there. And on top of that, I'm using a high ricochet string patch to add some movement to the piece. I have the brass low long slight bend patch adding another swell and then crescendoing into the lowest point. With that crescendo I have the brass high overblown, the frozen high and low strings also adding to that crescendo. To emphasize the ending of that crescendo, I'm using a low woods staccato patch. And then on top of that, I'm using the Darwin percussion and I'm using a very low bass drum sound to add a sub hit to accent it. So moving into the lowest point in the Glimmer of Hope, the foundation of this section is the Northern Lights pad and the high strings doing harmonic tremolos. Then when the melody comes in, I'm actually using a legato patch from the Chamber Strings Library. The legato patches in Tundra are very beautiful, but they are also a little too slow for this particular melody to my taste. And then when the melody does come in, I'm also using the Low Woods finger trills to give us some foundation to the chords. Then once we get to the end of part A of the theme, I have the Flautondo Consort High and Low, the High and Low Hollow Woods, and the High and Low Overblown Brass coming in to back up the melody with the harmony. And all of these are just playing different voicings of the chord progression. And at the very end, I also have the harmonic tremolos coming back in to gently take us to victory. So with this mix, I didn't do anything too crazy. This library has some amazing ambience to it, and I really wanted to emphasize that. On the Chamber Strings first violin patch, I'm using quite a bit of the close mic to allow it to pop out above the mix and set above the Tundra patches. So for the patches that I wanted to use more like a traditional type orchestra, I used a lot of the close mics, tree mics, and ambient mics. For the patches that I wanted to be more of a texture and atmosphere, I used only the ambient mics and the outriggers. For all the tracks, I'm using a little bit of EQ just to carve out some of the muddiness and add a little bit of presence to it. For reverbs, I'm using the Southern California Hall from East West Spaces 2. Each bus has its own section of reverb. Strings are using the front strings patch. Woodwinds are using the choir patch. I'm using the choir patch on the woodwinds because they don't have a woodwinds preset. The percussion and the synths are both using the percussion patch. And all of those buses are also being sent to a lexicon emulation, which is the Digital Hollywood Hall 5.2. I do have some presets I like to use from Ozone 8 that I put on the master bus to add a little bit of 
saturation and grit to the samples. I'm using the vintage tape saturation. I'm also using an exciter with the analog preset. I'm using an imager to give the mix some more space. And then lastly, I have an EQ just to make some adjustments to some frequencies. I'm also using a side channel to remove some bass frequencies from the sides just to center the bass up even more. Well, for one, I think this cue could work really well with just a traditional sounding orchestra library, but using Tundra adds a fresh take on this type of cue. I think the massive size of the orchestra played quieter adds some space and ambience to the cue that would be missing from another library. The harmonic trims, the ricochet, the multiphonic woods, and the brass slight bend are all patches that sound really amazing on their own, but when you blend them together and, and you have this big massive soundscape of these different layers mixed in with the different synthesizers on there, you can really create something that's very unique and very massive and perfect for a space type cue. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. If you have any cues or genres you'd like me to test out, let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.